Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome to another question and answer session for MRCS exam. This is the physiology portion of the MRCS. A patient is seen in clinic complaining of abdominal pain. Routine blood test shows sodium concentration 142 millimol per liter, potassium 4 millimol per liter, chloride 104 millimol per liter, bicarbonate 19 millimol per liter, urea 7.0 millimol per liter, creatine in 100 12 micromole per liter. What is the anion gap? Uh, here the options. Options are 4 millimole per liter, 14 millimole per liter, 20 millimole per liter, 21 millimole per liter, and 23 millimole per liter. So uh, in this question, they uh, want to know what is the anion gap. So first of all, we have to know details about the anion gap. So first of all, we have to know the anion gap actually the anion gap it is gap between the cation and anion especially is this difference between the major anion and major cation because all the uh, cation will not be included here uh, some of the cation um, uh, concentration is very less so in this condition we usually ignore this and some of the anion also we ignore this so it is difference between the anion the cation and anion so let's see the equation so here we can see this is the anion gap so what is anion gap the anion gap is calculated by sodium plus potassium which is the cation so two cation one is the sodium another one is the potassium and then bicarbonate and chloride so the sodium and potassium and bicarbonate and chloride the difference between them is the anion gap and normally this anion gap is 8 to 14 millimole per liter and this is useful considered in patient with metabolic acidosis so in case of metabolic acidosis this anion gap will be hampered so normal anion gap 8 to 14 that will hamper in case of the metabolic acidosis so this equation is very very important and we have to remember very carefully that the anion gap it is the difference between the cation and anion and the cations they are sodium and potassium and the cation is the chloride and bicarbonate and these four ions these four ions actually they are the component of the serum electrolyte when we do the serum electrolyte this four component present so it is very very easy to measure anion gap by investigating the serum electrolyte here some important features such as the normal anion gap and a raised anion gap this two point is important and there is a important mnemonic sorry in important a technique present in where you need not to read all these conditions such as uh, these four topics and these four lines you uh, if you not read no problem you will be answered very easily so first of all causes of the anion gap or normal anion gap so when there will be anion gap will be normal metabolic acidosis but anion gap normal in which condition when there is manipulated with electrolyte that means sodium potassium chloride bicarbonate and any other electrolyte so where there is dealing with electrolyte in this condition anion gap will be normal so this one line is very very important this single word will be enough to answer all the anion gap question that means when this pathological condition it deals with the ions that means sodium potassium chloride bicarbonate ammonium and any other ion in this condition anion gap will be normal so first of all here we can see a renal tubular acidosis in this condition there is manipulation of the electrolyte through the distal convoluted tubule and 
collecting duct and also the proximal convoluted tubule in different type of the renal tubular acidosis. We know there are different type of renal tubular acidosis such as the renal tubular acidosis 1, 2, 3, 4. So in this condition, the renal tubular acidosis, it occurs in the proximal and distal convoluted tubule, also the collecting duct and collecting tubule and in this condition, there is manipulation of the electrolyte in the nephrons of the kidney. So when there is dealing with the electrolyte uh, in this condition, an ion gap normal. Then here we can see D drug, drug, it acts on the, it is acetogelamide and acetogelamide, it acts on the proximal convoluted tubule and acts on bicarbonate. So in this condition also, it uh, plays with electrolyte. So it, in this condition, an ion gap normal. Then ammonium chloride injection, ammonium and chloride, when ammonium chloride injected, it is divided into ammonium and is divided into chloride. So again, dealing with the electrolyte and it is normal and ion gap. And in case of addition disease, it deals with the collecting duct or collecting tubule, electrolyte level. That means it less sodium reabsorb in the collecting tubule on collecting gap again dealing with this serum electrolyte and this is the normal anion gap but here we can see the raise anion gap raise anion gap occurs when there is no electrolyte and first of all here we can see the shock and hypoxia in case of shock and in case of hypoxia there is a deficient or deficient or low level of oxygen in this condition lactic acid develops so here we can see lactic acid develop lactic acid is any electrolyte no lactic acid not an electrolyte not so as it is not electrolyte in this condition anion gap will be raised on the other hand the ketone do you think ketone is electrolyte no ketone is not electrolyte ketone also is and substances so in this condition anion gap increases also the diabetic ketosis and alcoholic ketoacidosis all this condition ketone body increase that means keto acid increase in this condition no electrolyte change initially so this is a raised anion gap and urate, do you think urea is electrolyte? No, urea is a compound. So in case of renal failure, when urea increase, it is not electrolyte, so raise an ion gap. And here we can see salicylate and methanol poisoning also, it causes a raise an ion gap. And in this uh, question, the anion gap may be calculated by using sodium potassium bicarbonate and chloride that means sodium plus potassium here we can see sodium plus potassium here the sodium 142 and potassium 4 and bicarbonate plus chloride then this total is minus which is 23 millimole per liter so our answer here the anion gap is 20 3 millimole per liter and it is normal anion gap this is very very important it is normal anion gap it is anion gap but this anion gap is normal though this calculation is more than the more than the normal range which is the 8 to 14 so in this condition also the in due to abdominal pain uh, some of the lactic acid may also produced so in this condition the anion gap uh, may be uh, might be normal when it is 18 uh, 8 to 14 uh, sometimes consider uh, 18 or 20 up to 20 but here 23 that means uh, with the electrolyte some other condition uh, uh, that means uh, when there is the abdominal pain uh, probably there is some lactic acid uh, produced or other acid uh, produced for this condition this anion gap very very increase or increase above the normal range for this when we calculate the anion there the anion gap more than 40 thank you all